In this video, you will learn about phased array antennas that can control the direction of radiation without any inertia. In the early days of radar, there was a desire to swivel the antenna pattern with fixed antennas. The first devices could switch between in-phase and anti-phase feed by using two antennas or antenna groups. This allowed the sum and difference diagrams to be switched between two antenna patterns. The FU MG202, Liechtenstein, radar, as shown in the picture, was used during the Second World War. It had a frequency of 500 MHz and a wavelength of 0.6 meters. This was an onboard radar equipped with an antenna array and could detect targets up to 3 kilometers away. The so-called flimmer shelter, in English flicker switch, allowed for the simultaneous display of the in-phase feed as a sum signal and the out-of-phase feed as a differential signal. However, the original oscilloscope did not allow for color differentiation, which is only shown in the diagram for explanatory purposes. The motor performed multiple switching operations per second, causing the image to flicker and giving the operating principle its name. The smaller amplitude was that of the differential signal and the flicker switch was only activated when a sum signal was received. However, the sum signal alone was too imprecise for use with weapons. The minimum bearing made it possible to accurately target the radar even in the dark. The radar also allowed for the use of detour lines as phase shifters, but if the detour line was not set precisely to half the wavelength, the antenna would squint. This squinting could also be used intentionally. The Mammoth radar was developed in 1942 as an early warning radar system. It was the first 3D radar to use a phased array antenna, which was a fixed installation and measured 30 by 16 meters. The antenna weighed approximately 25 tons and utilized four complete Freya radar antennas side by side. The radar system was comprised of four lines on top of each other, with 16 dipoles on each line. The top two lines were the transmitting antenna, while the bottom two lines were the receiving antenna. As the antenna could not be rotated, the beam was swiveled electronically using an electrical compensator. This device consisted of mechanically moved phase shifters for each group of four dipoles, allowing the main beam to be steered in azimuth in an angle range of up to plus or minus 55 degrees to the main axis. Additionally, the phases between the two receiving lines were compared to measure an approximate elevation angle. Many modern phased array antennas use the same principle as the Mammoth radar from the past. If a horizontal antenna array from that time were to be produced with modern technology and higher frequencies, it would look like shown in the picture. However, this array does not have phase control yet. Each radiator emits a spherical wave which, when fed with in-phase signals, adds up to form a wavefront that moves perpendicular to the antenna array's geometric alignment, the so-called boresight. This narrow angular range is called the main lobe. In all other directions, the partial waves tend to cancel each other out. The power dividers at the points where the lines split are typically Wilkinson dividers, which divide the power into two equal parts with the same phase position. In this simple case, each radiator receives an equal part of the transmit power. During reception, the received powers, which should ideally have the same phase angle, are added together to create a stronger output signal. If the echo signals have an unequal phase angle, it means that the echo is not coming from the main direction. These individual signals would have unequal phases and generate a weaker output signal. A phased array antenna is designed with phase shifters inserted in each feed line to the dipoles. This enables the direction of radiation to be adjusted to the left or right by an off boresight angle. This adjustment is done electronically, without any inertia, making it faster than mechanical rotation. The phase shifters also have digitally controllable attenuators allowing the power distribution within the series to be managed for optimizing either a sharper main lobe or a smaller side lobe level.
A uniform power distribution, left in red, forms the narrowest main lobe but has quite large side lobes with a maximum of around minus 13 decibels. With a Dolph Chebyshev distribution, right in blue, the main lobe is somewhat wider, but the level of the side lobes is only minus 26 decibels here. When several of such antenna groups are stacked on top of each other and each group has phase control, it creates a linear array. Each antenna group emits a narrow beam in the main direction with a wider opening in the elevation angle. By stacking multiple antenna groups on top of each other, their beams overlap to create a thin antenna pattern, also in the elevation angle. The phase control between the individual antenna groups delays their signals so that this thin antenna pattern can be electronically steered at the elevation angle. However, the antenna still needs to be rotated mechanically at the bearing angle. This type of phased array antenna is still used in many older air surveillance radars. Modern multifunctional radars use a planar array, which consists of multiple radiators with independently controllable phase shifters. This design enables the antenna pattern to be adjusted accurately at any bearing and elevation angle, eliminating the need for antenna rotation. The term AESA radar from active electronically scanned array refers to a radar with an active phased array antenna. The difference between active and passive antennas is that with a passive antenna, a central transmitter generates the entire transmission power. This is then fed to the antenna via a common supply line for all antenna elements. With an active antenna, the power amplifiers are decentralized and located directly in the antenna. They are implemented using standardized transceiver modules, known as TR modules. They contain not only the power amplifier but also a low noise preamplifier for the receive path, several transmit receive switches, as duplexers, and the adjustable phase shifter and attenuator. In the case of larger antennas, they supply several radiators that have been combined into a group, or there is one such module for each radiator. To ensure that the antenna pattern is symmetrical, in other words, that the azimuth has the same half power beam width as the elevation angle, the phased array antenna should have an approximately round shape. Only about plus minus 60 degrees of electronic slewing is possible. Further out, the diagram would be too deformed. Therefore, at least three, preferably four antenna arrays are required for surveillance in a 360 degrees full circle. These are known in the jargon as faces. Each of the two faces of the ANFPS 115 shown here contains 2,677 dipoles. However, the dipoles do not all have to be actively transmitting. Although all of these 2,677 dipoles of the PAVE paws are equipped with receivers, only 1792 of them are feeded at the moment of transmission and each delivers approximately 350 watts of pulse power. Reducing the number of radiators to a fraction of the number possible to fill the entire aperture does not lead to a significant deterioration in the shape of the main lobe. However, the side lobes deteriorate in proportion to the number of unused radiators. The antenna gain in the transmission moment is based on the number of radiating elements used. The thinning shown increases the level of the side lobes by approximately 4 decibels compared to a filled aperture. The crow's nest antenna was developed and patented by the Fraunhofer Institute for High Frequency Physics and Radar Techniques, FHR. The name is derived from the name for the lookout on the mast of a sailing ship the so-called crow's nest, from which you have an all-round view of the entire hemisphere. It has not yet progressed beyond an experimental setup. The dielectric between the radiators, which is necessary for a stable structure but prevents cooling, is problematic. Also, only horizontal polarization is possible due to the vertical feed lines. There are different methods to shift the phase of a signal. 
but the most common one is by using bypass lines linked to the antenna's feed line. This is done following the same principle as with a flickering switch, but instead of mechanical switches, pin diodes controlled by switching voltages are used. Delay times are produced by differences in delay time through the bypass lines. For instance, a 4-channel system can use a 4-bit control signal for the pin diode switches. As seen in the upper phase shifter with the 22. 5 degrees, more precise subdivisions aren't necessary. A total phase shift of 337.5 degrees would be achieved when all switches have switched to the detour. The next step would be 360 degrees, which is the same as 0 degrees. The picture shows a real circuit board with a discrete phase shifter for radar operating in the L-band. The switches are realized by pin diodes. They are controlled by a bipolar 4-bit control word. The supply lines for the control voltages are provided with windings acting as inductors. At higher frequencies, the entire circuit can be designed as a small integrated component. However, these chips work according to a different principle than the switching of bypass lines. The two circuits operating as duplexers at the input and output indicate that this circuit board was used in a discrete transceiver module of an active antenna. The summation of the possibly large number of array channels can be done either by free space, space feed array, or a network, constraint feed array. With space-fed antennas, the phased array works as a filter switched into the radiation path of a primary radiator. In the case of constraint-fed antennas, the phased array antenna is the primary radiator. With space feeding, the phased array antenna is illuminated by a point-like radiation source as the primary radiator. The radial radiation components are received by the small individual antennas of the phased array changed in phase, and radiated again. The advantage of space feeding is that the primary radiator already provides an approximately Gaussian-shaped power distribution and the phase shifters therefore do not require adjustable attenuators for beam shaping. In the Patriot, the primary radiator is located behind the antenna array under the tarpaulin. The ANMPQ-65, Patriot, is therefore a transmission type. This has the advantage that the primary radiator and its mount do not cast any shadows on the phased array. However, the space behind the antenna array is thus blocked. With the reflection type, the primary radiator is located in front of the reflector, as with a parabolic antenna. With the transmission type, the energy is transmitted through the antenna array. The reflector type receives the energy from the primary radiator, influences it in phase, and directs it to an extreme mismatch where the energy is completely reflected. The phase shifters act a second time, therefore only need half the value, and the receiving antennas are now also the transmitting antennas. With the reflection type, there is enough space behind the antenna to accommodate all circuits, example given. Phase shifter control power supply, etc. But the horn radiator interferes with the radiation. Not only does it form a shadow in the best direction of radiation, center, but it would also absorb the reflected energy, which would then generate a standing wave in the feed system. As with a parabolic antenna, the primary radiator can also assume an offset position here. In this case, however, the phase shifters must also take into account the differences in propagation time from the primary radiator to the single antennas of the phased array. The Russian Target Acquisition Radar 91N6E, NATO designation, Big Bird, uses a reflection type phased array antenna, which is equipped with two diametrically arranged antenna arrays and has a range of up to 600 kilometers. This radar is part of the S-300, Triumph, Anti-Aircraft Missile Complex, NATO designation, SA-20B, Gargoyle B. A power distribution network is required for the constrained feed of the phased array antenna, 
via which the centrally generated energy is distributed to the single radiating elements. With parallel feeding, the transmission power is distributed in phase at each node. The power dividers guarantee in phase distribution. All feed lines must have the same length to avoid phase shifts due to propagation time differences. Apart from the fact that phased array antennas are often at a disadvantage due to the narrow bandwidth of the single radiators designed as dipoles, this parallel feed at least does not impose any further restrictions on the bandwidth. The power dividers can be broadband Wilkinson dividers or simple T-shaped branches with impedance-matched lambda quarter wave sections. With series feeding, the transmission energy is conducted from a single radiator to the next via a central waveguide. Directional couplers are used to decouple power and the line must be terminated at the end with a resistor of the same impedance to prevent reflections. The distance between the directional couplers must be exactly an integer multiple of the wavelength in the waveguide so that the same phase position is present everywhere at the inputs of the phase shifters. At the edges of this bandwidth, operation could be made possible by taking into account the phase shift occurring on the line with the phase shifters. However, this phase shift can also be specifically exploited. This leads to phased array antennas with frequency-dependent beam steering. These are a special case of series feed. The frequency-steered phased array antenna, FSPA, uses this effect to steer the beam depending on the transmission frequency. Whether it is steered to the left or right depends on the side of the feed. If the feed in the picture is from the left because the terminating resistor is on the right, then the slot next to the end feed is the time reference. The wavelength in the waveguide is now smaller than the distance between the radiators, the next slot will receive the voltage peak of the wave slightly later. The slot next to the terminating resistor is the last to receive a local voltage maximum. This means that if the frequency is increased, that is, the wavelength is shorter than the distance between the slots, it is steered to the right here in the image because we are in front of the antenna. In practice, however, the steering direction is indicated by a position behind the antenna. So, it is better to say that the antenna steers the pattern in the direction of the terminating resistor. This statement is independent of the position. When the distance between radiators is increased in steps of integer multiples of the wavelength, the phase differences multiply as the frequency changes. A smaller deviation in frequency causes a larger phase shift. However, the version of the antenna shown in this setup is not practical because the distance between the slots affects its pattern. To overcome this, the waveguide must be folded in a meandering shape so that the two slots are again at the original distance from each other, as mentioned above. A serpentine feed, also known as a snake feed, refers to the method of feeding the lines of a linear frequency controlled phased array antenna via detour lines in a serial manner. The ratio of the distance between the radiator groups D to the length of the detour lines L acts to steer the antenna pattern. To enable a steering angle of plus or minus 45 degrees, the bandwidth of the antenna would have to be around 30% with a ratio of D to L equals 5, which is almost impossible to achieve. With a ratio of D to L equals 20, around 7% bandwidth is sufficient. With a desired steering angle, however, the phase shift not only affects the elevation angle but also the bearing angle. The tilt is therefore not only upwards, but also to the left at the same time. For this reason, the entire antenna array of older phased array antennas was simply rotated in the opposite direction so that the tilt in the elevation angle is vertical again. Incidentally, the ratio D to L can also be read from this angle of rotation. In modern radar sets, software is used to correct the error in the bearing angle. 
Phased array antennas have become essential in modern air defense radars due to their outstanding antenna parameters such as directivity and antenna gain. Optimized power distribution allows for relatively low side lobes to be achieved. Phased array antennas enable a rapid change in the direction of radiation, allowing for monitoring of a large volume around their location. They can use a single pulse in one direction, or multiple pulses per direction to detect Doppler frequencies. They are particularly suitable for multifunction radars. One disadvantage of phased array antennas is that they can only monitor a limited sector per antenna face. When the steering angle is very large, the half width of the antennas deteriorates considerably. This means that for 360 degrees coverage, three to four antenna faces are required. The electronic control system for phased array antennas is very complex, which results in high costs. Because of these costs, air surveillance radars with phased array antennas are still prohibitively expensive for air traffic control. You may find the Internet Radar Tutorial useful. It has a vast collection of radar set data. Thank you for your attention.